Hi everybody, hope you're well. Um, one of the things I don't like about this caravan, and it's a feature which is now becoming more and more prevalent across caravans across the range, is the lack of a decent voltmeter. I've got this beautiful voltmeter here, this indication from empty to full. I press the battery voltage, and there we go, the caravan's lit up. It tells me that the battery is full. But, but how full is it? I mean, is that 12.8 volts? Is that 13.2 volts? How full is the battery? I have no way of knowing. Well, of course, one of the things I did buy right at the beginning was a Bluetooth dongle to go into the uh, MPP to controller. It's the same controller I fitted in our last caravan. It's the Truma SDC12, and it has an attachment point at the top there that the Bluetooth dongle fits into. You download the app and you can see all the details. It's theoretically fantastic. However, the application and that dongle are far from perfect. The dongle breaks down every now and again um, so that you can't connect to it. The software is appalling, but if the two things do line up and the planets are all in alignment and agreement, you can understand how much charge is coming from the solar panel, how much charge is going into the battery and how full the battery actually is. So in that respect, it's quite good. However, there is another way of finding out exactly what the voltage is in our caravan. And that is to purchase a meter. Now this one is the second meter which I've purchased for the caravan. Uh, I bought one months and months and months ago and it wasn't branded to Truma. It looked exactly the same. It had exactly the same part number on the back. I bought it, I plugged it in. It worked for about 30 seconds and then it just went off, completely dead. Um, so I sent it back, got a refund, and never thought any more of it. I was at the show at the NEC and I saw that they had these on display, so I thought I'll buy one. They were available on the web shop. Now, admittedly, the price was twice the price um, of what the original one cost me. This one was 60 quid from the Truma web shop, but this is the official Truma one. I can't guarantee the cheaper alternatives, um, even though they look the same, they've got the same part number. I can't guarantee it because I've already had a bad experience with those. But this one is the official trim one. And today we're going to fit it in and uh, be able to see exactly how full our battery is. So let's show you everything that you get in the box and more crucially, what you don't get in the box. So now I've already had this open, as you could probably imagine. Uh, you obviously get the meter, which is this here. Uh, there's the connection there, which we'll come on to in a moment. You've got a bezel for mounting it. Fantastic. You get the instructions on how to use it because there is a few things in here which you can do. And then we get ourselves a ridiculously long, and I think that's two and a half meters long data cable to plug into the controller. Uh, we need to cut this down in a minute, but we'll come on to that in a moment. Now, crucially, you may have worked out what you don't get in the box, and that is any hardware to mount this. So yesterday, I spent the day at B&Q having a look at all the various screws and hardware, etc. And this is what I've come up with. Uh, they're black, so it doesn't look so obtrusive. Um, and they are 50 millimeters in length. So our solar control is held up in this little cubby hole up here. And as you can see, I've got a nice amount of space on this wall here. And I propose fitting this, it's a tight fit, but I propose fitting the controller probably about there, maybe there. Yeah, about there would do. Um, that's where I think it's gonna go. I don't think it will look too bad. And I can literally just screw straight away from here into that wall. But before I do that, I'm gonna do some pilot holes uh, to make sure that I don't destroy or split that wall in any way, shape or form. So I think that's where it's gonna go. But before we do any of that, we need to shorten the data cable because two and a half meters of cable is not gonna fit in there too well. Um, that's the length of the cable that we need. So I'm just going to cut the cable so it's nice and square. So let's uh, put that in there and strip like so. The key thing about this is that when you're making these cables up, it's got to be the same colors um, from left to right, no matter what side it is. So if you look on the um, clip side, it goes from uh, blue to white. It means that if we want to put the cable on, it has to go on that way around. It makes sense in a minute. So in my bag of plugs here, I've got some RJ12. These are commonly called RJ11s, but they're not. RJ11s only use two or four connectors. RJ12 use all six. So what I was saying before is uh, that the, the color scheme needs to go sort of from blue to white. 
you can see that we've got white to blue, which means we need to go that way around and put the plug on like so, okay? But at the moment, the cables are much too long, so we just need to just trim those down a little bit. A little bit of cable go everywhere. So, uh, what did I say? It was uh, blue to white, that's right. So it goes on that way round. Now we use our crimper, and it's got settings for different types here, and this is the six, um, no, let's go the other way up, Daniel. Goes for the six pole, hit the crimp, and there we go, our end is on. The final step before we plug it into our controller is to make sure that the cable is okay. What it's doing is it's just sending a, a closing a circuit and it's going one, two, three, four, five, six, all the way down to six. And then we're just making sure that when it clicks on one, it's corresponding up here as well. And it all goes all the way down here to six. And that means that the cable is made up correctly. It's worthwhile checking because it's very easy to make these connections wrong and it's very easy to make a mistake. So now that that's made up, what I'm going to do now is plug it into the controller, make sure it all works, and then we can actually get on and install it. So as you can see, with it all plugged in, it's working perfectly. Quite happy with that. That now means we can crack on and do the installation. I want to obviously put that in about there, and there is literally just enough space there to fit this in, which I think is okay. And the way I'm going to go about this is I'm going to put some pilot holes here so you can probably see just one just there another one there and there's another one over here so I'm just going to put a small pilot hole which will allow the, the screw to go in better there you go I've put in the four holes there that would just be nice and tidy then, so it doesn't split any of this thin woodwork as I drive the uh, the screw into place. Cool. That's all nicely in place. There we go. Plugged in. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. I'm very happy with that. Right, let's go through the instructions and let's see what we can actually do with this thing. So right now we are seeing, we've got the battery voltage here and we can see that this is flashing up here telling us that there is um, charge, but also that the battery is basically full. We can tell it's full by the controller over here. So there's no demand on the panel um, because this bar isn't illuminated, but let's go through some of the things that we can actually have a look at. If I press up here, we can see that there is, at the moment, um, the charge current, which is 0.2 amps. Now, if I turn the caravan on and turn some things on, like so, the caravan is now on. There is some demand on the panel, so we can start to see this coming up here, and there's more demand coming from uh, the panel. If I turn some lights on, like so, we can see that there is now two amps, 2.1 amps, 2.2 amps of draw, from the uh, panel and the panel is now starting to deliver some current to our battery because the battery is being used. That's great. Um, I'm just going to turn the van off a minute because of the radio being on. Um, let's carry on up. We can see that there's 11.5 kilowatt hours of charge that's come from the panel. Uh, in total it's delivered 961 amp hours of charge. Um, the voltage on the panel is 20.8, 20. 20 point, well, well, it's above 20 volts. That's the panel voltage, which is good. Um, and it's delivering nine watts of charge to the battery. And you can see that the battery is still, well, it did have a blob up here, but also the sun is out there as well, saying that it is uh, producing power from the panel. And then we'll go right back to the voltage. And that's really good. Now it's not lit up at the moment because what I've done is I've pressed and held a button here and it comes up with LED and you can see you can set the intensity here of that panel. I think that looks that looks good like that. So if I don't, don't touch the meter for three minutes or so the backlight will switch off and it will be completely unlit which is really really useful. It means that we're not going to have a lit up cupboard in the middle of the night. 
After looking at it after a couple of minutes, I realized that if I mounted the bezel 90 degrees round, it would hide the cable somewhat. So that's what I've just done. I've unscrewed it, I've moved it around 90 degrees and the cable now comes out in this corner. And as you can see, it loops down there like so. I think that actually looks a lot neater. I've also um, reattached some stickers over the screw holes, which were up here, which were a bit untidy. I went up to the dealership, I've just purchased a, a sticker sheet of these, uh, which are incredibly useful to keep around if you ever do decide to take things apart. Uh, it's incredibly useful to have these. This cost me a quid, um, very useful to have. And there we go, that's a really nice, neat job to do, isn't it? Really easy, very straightforward, anybody can do it. And it's something that I think every caravan should have, a decent voltmeter at least. Something far better than that, because frankly, nobody knows what that actually means. Um, if you've got one of these controllers, it's stupidly easy to do, you just plug it in, even though you may have to shorten the cable, but if not, if you've got a place to stuff it, you can obviously wrap it up and hide it behind a cupboard. I could have done that, if I'll be honest with you, I could have stuffed the cables down that hole underneath the controller and it would have been absolutely fine. But I have the kit, so why not do it? I've put a link to that kit, by the way, the networking cable making kit. I've put a link to that down below. That is an Amazon affiliated link. It doesn't cost you any extra, but the small pence that I get from that really do help the channel. I've also put a link to this product here, which is in the uh, Truma web shop. It's not sponsored, not endorsed, not in anything, uh, but I've put a link to that in the um, description as well. Oh, I'll put a link to the screwdriver set, which I used as well, which I keep in the caravan, which is incredibly useful. And in fact, it was a birthday present. No, Christmas present from Angela. But there we go, a grand total of time, probably 10 minutes if you're not filming it, uh, to do that job. And that's gonna be really useful now for me to know exactly what's happening, how good this solar panel is doing, and if we're actually generating any power, um, which is gonna be useful because next year we're going off grid a fair amount, uh, which is gonna be really, really good. So there we go. I hope this video has been useful for you. Any comments or questions, please do pop them down below. Let me know your thoughts. And if you wouldn't mind, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification icon. If you can do all of that, I'll see you in the next upload. Many thanks for watching everybody. Take care. Bye-bye.